So we're almost there on the SY77 restoration job. And we've got one more thing to do. And it's the thing that's been sitting over in the corner of the workshop very quietly <laughs> for about four weeks now. And that's upgrade the memory. So the machine's already in pieces. It's sitting here. The back's off. As I said, I've just done finished the, the disk drive upgrade on this. But before we get going, no parish notices. If you haven't subscribed, why haven't you? Hit that subscribe icon. Hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when content is uploaded to the channel. If you want to support the channel, head on over to Patreon. The address is down here somewhere. That's www the uh, patreon.com forward slash the music tech guy there's only one of me uh, and pledge some support for the channel and the production of the videos but now to the important things so normally when the back is on this machine I'll just pop the back on it like that to get to the memory slots you would take this panel off six screws one two three four five six you would remove that panel and it would give you access to the memory slots. But since the panel is already off, we don't have to do that because we've already got access to the memory slots. So, getting my trusty screwdriver. The SY77, oh sorry, SY85, it's not an SY77. Bad, John. Uh, the SY85 has uh, 512 meg of RAM on board plus you can expand it with volatile memory, which is what these two chips are. So they've been put in at some point by somebody. But then we have these two slots over here. And these are for non-volatile memory. Basically, this means that anything you store into these two RAM blocks will stay when the keyboard is powered down. And that's what we're going to install. So these are... Uh, non-volatile, let's push it up to the camera so you can read that, RAM, okay, all in its anti-static bags. Um, and what you do with this is, first of all, get into the bag, which is always easier said than done. And the way you install this is effectively, it has like a D-shaped connector on it. Let's bring that up to the camera. So you can see there's like a D-shaped connector and that's a D-shaped connector there. And basically what you do is you just push it home. just like that and now this keyboard is fully loaded for RAM so what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to do um, I'm not going to show you put me putting this back on because while I was working on this I found another little gem so this is uh, one of the supports that actually sits underneath um, this uh, power supply unit and it actually sits just under there and it's obviously when I took the power supply out it was broken anyway and it's come loose so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to epoxy that back in to give this some support because as you can see that is quite loose um, and then I'll put this back together so the next time you're going to see the SY85 is with me playing it or attempting to play it, should I say. But that's it. The SY85 uh, restoration is now, I believe, complete. Welcome to part six addendum. So I wasn't going to do a separate video about this, but this is always my, my pet rant. Um, when you buy a keyboard, uh, 
one of the last things you'll think about doing is actually looking at the fuse in the plug. Now, for many countries around the world, this is quite irrelevant because you don't have fuses in the plugs. Uh, but here in the UK, we do have fuses in the plugs and they are designed to protect the equipment. So if you take the fuse out of the plug, like I'm just doing at the moment, uh, and have a look at what fuse you've got in the plug, and there you go, there is a 13 amp fuse. Okay, I'm just going to pop that on there. Um, a 13 amp fuse. So, some very simple rudimentary maths. Power equals volts times current. Okay, and in the UK, we operate an operating current at 240 volts, and with a 13 amp fuse, that's uh, what 2,400, uh, 2,640, 2,009. Uh, my mass is going around me. Uh, 640, 840, 880, 13, 11, 20. 3,120 watts of power before that fuse will blow. Um, if you look on the back of this keyboard, the keyboard says it is rated at 20 watts. Okay, that means it is designed to draw less than a tenth of an amp. Therefore, it is completely over or incorrectly fused. At a minimum, I'd expect this keyboard to be fused with a 3 amp fuse which is 900 and, uh, sorry, uh, b -b -b 720 watts of power before the fuse goes bang, by which point you have well and truly fried this keyboard if you are pulling that much power. However, if you go and search on the internet, what you can find is you can find the uh, fuses with much lower ratings. So if you go to the local DIY store, the lowest rating you'll probably find is a 3 amp. Um, but if you go on the internet, you can find fuses that are rated at 1, uh, even half an amp, or 1 and 2 amps. So what I've done is I've bought a bunch of fuses many, many moons ago that are rated at much, much lower. So this means that Hopefully, with a bit of luck, if we have a power surge on this keyboard that is pulling more than 240 watts of power, this fuse will go long before the 3,000 watts of power that this fuse will blow at. It's one of my pet rents, and most uh, manufacturers in this company, country will supply this stuff with 3-amp. At some point, this has been fitted with a 13-amp fuse, which is way over the top. Fit the right fuse. Fit a very low value fuse. That means if something does go wrong, you've got less chance of frying your keyboard with a problem. Part six, addendum rant over.